Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning and welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's devotional moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to Psalm 67? And this is where we are going to be talking about the peace and the confidence of knowing that you are secure in the arms of God. Isn't that a wonderful thought? I tell you, it it helps you to deal with life situations and journeys and circumstances that come upon each and every one of our lives. Yet there's a resolve, there's a, a peace, there's a, a joy of knowing no matter what I encounter today, I know and have confidence that the God of heaven is walking with me. You should be there by now. Let's open in prayer. Father, I honor you this morning. Oh God, I just thank you, oh God, for your love, your kindness, your mercy, your peace, your provisions, your joy. Oh God, I am a satisfied customer. And I pray for my brothers and sisters that are listening this morning. Lord God, no matter what their circumstances is, that you would touch them today whether it's in the emotions, whether it's physical, whether it's spiritual, that they would understand that there's a rest in God that you can't get anywhere else. Lord, I bless you, worship you, and thank you today. Holy Spirit, you are truly welcome in this place. We ask you, O God, that you would set the atmosphere in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 67 says, God be merciful to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. And then there's a word there that says Selah, S-E-L-A-H. Whenever you read a verse and you see this word Selah, it means to take a break, to stop and to think about what you have just previously read. So let's read that again. God be merciful to us. And bless us and cause his face to shine upon us. Be merciful to us means that when we cry out to God, he allows us to draw near to him in a way that you can feel his presence. When Jesus was in Jerusalem before he went to the cross, he stood on the mountain and he looked over the valley and his his heart went out to the people. And what he said to me really ministered to my heart. When he spoke over the people, I received that to myself. And he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I desire to take you under my wings as a bird, as a mother does her chicks, but you would not. And every time I read that, or every time I think about that, I say unto the Lord, Lord, I will. I desire to come under the shadow of your wings. Be merciful to me. The Lord says, if you would draw near to me, I will draw near to you. And drawing near to us, he blesses us with his presence. He blesses us with wisdom. He blesses us with his love and direction. And he causes his face to shine upon us. Why do you think you look more younger than you did years ago when you were out there living, maybe whatever way you were living, outside of God, let's just put it that way. And now that you know who Christ is, you have so much joy, so much peace. The stress levels is not as high as they were. And see, these things make us age quickly. So as we walk with the Lord and we walk in that peace of the Lord, he brings a a vibrance. He brings a shine to us and not a shine on the outside of dressing up and putting on makeup or whatever men and women do to get ready to present themselves to the community, but an inner shine, a love that comes from within the heart that cannot be manifested, uh, cannot be faked or um, counterfeited, but it is manifested. Let's go on. 
Verse 2, that your way may be known on earth. I don't know about you today, but I want to walk in the ways of the Lord. Your salvation among the nations, that your way may be known on the earth and your salvation among the nations. I believe that the Lord loves everyone. I believe that the Lord wants to save everyone. But that as being created in the image of God, he leaves that choice to us. And so that's why he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I desire to take you under my wings as a, as a mother bird would do her chicks, but you would not. Oh, glory to God. Verse three said, let the people praise you, O God, and let all the people praise you. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously. Many of us have lived some life and we have been in situations and circumstances where we were mistreated, misunderstood. And so coming into Christ, we learn that God has no respect of person. He has no respect of your color. He has no respect of of your age. He has no respecter of your education. He has no respecter of your knowledge. His desire is to judge righteously because he is a righteous judge. And so whatever you're doing to serve God, to serve the community, to serve people, you continue to do that because your labor brothers and sisters are not in vain. Many times people don't want to uh, uh, work in the ministry in the church. They don't want to uh, help others or whatever their uh, situation might be because they feel that they are not recognized or people don't care or people don't notice. They want to be in places where they are seen and their names are called and they are acknowledged. Yet they say, oh, no, you know, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm not. But yes, it is. Let's just be honest. Yes, it is. Everybody wants to be appreciated. And the Lord says that we are to truly encourage one another. We are to encourage those that in authority over us. And we should be encouraged by those that we are in, in authority over. But when you look for that, it opens the door for the enemy to play with your emotions to make you believe that you don't matter to others, that others don't love you or concern with you. He get a chance to play with your mind. Our battlefield is in the mind. And when you conquer it in your mind, you can conquer it in your life. So always understand that the God of heaven is the true judge. He sees it all. He sees your labor. He sees everything that you have ever done for his glory whether you help others to build their ministry and then they get to that place and they forget all about you. They act like they didn't even know that you were the one with them when nobody else believed in their dream, but you did. And then when the dream come to pass, they act like you was just another person along the way. And it can hurt. But let me tell you something. When you do whatever you do with the right motive of heart, Unto God, you will never lose your reward. And people that do that will lose a good friend and a good servant that's willing to work with them and to help them uh, build whatever God has put in their heart. So don't get discouraged. Never get discouraged. Learn from it. Learn what to do and what not to do. Gain wisdom on how to do other things that God is going to call you to do. And you continue to serve the Lord. Remember, nothing you do. Jesus said, if you give someone a drink of water in my name, God will reward you. What I love about God is that he keeps very good records. Things that you may have forgotten, things that I may have forgotten, God does not forget. I think about Malachi in the book of Esther and how Malachi had um, discovered someone had a plot to kill the king. He wasn't looking for it. He just happened to be in the right place to hear it. 
And so he got the word to the king's men that protected him. And the, uh, the plot and plan was revealed and uh, the men were killed. And so he forgot about it. This had happened years and years and years before Esther had even became a queen. So years later, he had a dream. And God revealed to him that this man uh, had, spared, had helped to save his life. And so he called and he had uh, this man who hated God's people at that time, Haman, to take the man of God, Malachi, and put him on the king's most prized horse and clothing and ride him through the city and said, this is the man that uh, the king honors. And so though he had forgotten about it, God had not forgotten about it. So God never forgets our sacrifice, our tears, our blood, and our sweat that we do for his glory. And so that's why it's so important when you're serving God, that you're doing it with the right heart and the right motive. You know, the Lord said that if you are doing things to get the praises of men, he said, that's the only reward that you will receive. I'm looking for my reward from the King of glory. I'm looking for a crown to be able to throw at the feet of Jesus. And so my heart is to do the will of God, to do the service of God and to glorify him and not myself. Let's finish this verse out. Uh, verse five says, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our God. God, our God. Hallelujah. God, our God. Our own God shall bless us. Mm, what a glorious word. Verse 7. God shall bless you, my brother and my sister, and all the ends of the earth shall fear and reverence him. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then the earth shall yield her increase. God, our own God, shall bless us. Look for your blessings. Look for your rewards. Look for your accolades from the Lord. Let his favor bless you today, my brothers and sisters. Let his joy and his peace be upon you today. Let the praise of our God be in your heart today as you remember that everything that you do, the beauty of it, the reward of it is in the heart. Why are you doing it? May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you, my brother and my sister, and give you his peace. I love you with the love of Jesus. Enjoy your day. God bless you.